This is a makeup tutorial for my ballet One Girls, okay? So this is how you guys are gonna do your stage makeup. First, you're going to start with liquid foundation. I use this specific one because it's very cakey and I have very oily skin. If you have more dryish skin, you might wanna use one that actually has a moisturizer inside, like in it. So, just going to apply all over the face. I prefer using my fingers because um, they blend better than foreign objects. It's um, because of the natural oils that are on your hands and your face. So, I do a very sloppy job just because I'm so lazy. But the real objective is just to get the whole face covered to give yourself a blank slate. Really cover up. Try to avoid the lips because there is no getting makeup off your lips. It's terrible. Unless you want to start all over again, which I don't. And I don't think you do either. So, almost done. I do it in four big sections, um, two cheeks, forehead, chin, I guess five sections, and nose. I try to get a little less makeup for my nose since it's less of a surface area than the other four sections. And really blend in, especially if you guys who or high stress dancers, make sure you get under the eyes. You wanna cover up those circles because I guarantee you they will show on stage. Mm. Then, next step, concealer. You really wanna get all the blemishes because even though you may not be able to see them on this video, I definitely have them and if I were to step under a stage light right now, they would show. So you really wanna get all of the blemishes, especially the ones that are super red. And then you just want to gently pat them in. Don't rub them in because that will dis that will give a thinner distribution of the makeup. If you pat it in, it gives it a thicker distribution and it stays in place. So really just pat it in. And that goes for under the eyes as well. You don't really want to rub anything except for the liquid foundation because you're trying to cover a huge surface area and you're not going for a full on cover. Really just pat it in. Okay, next step. Oop. Just a couple things flying. Next step is going to be your pancake powder, which is um, compressed powder. I don't know, uh, what does it say? Um, Compact powder, I, sorry, um, compacted powder. So it's really just pushed in, you get a sponge it comes with, you don't need anything fancy. You just apply it on, really get on your forehead. Get all over your face, really get in there. Same thing as the liquid foundation. All right, now that you got that covered, you have your blank slate completed, except one step. Sorry, I apologize. You want to put concealer on your eyelids too. Remember we mentioned that so that you don't sweat off the eyeshadow and it becomes a terrible mess on stage. Okay. All right. 
now your blank slate is complete. Um, next up, I would say, would be, sorry, I have something in my eye. Um, next step, I would say, would be your blush. Remember, we said we want a really heavy line with the blush. I use something that's super dark for my skin tone because I am... For the, um, for the makeup that I use, the True Match, uh, I'm classified as classic ivory. So that's more of a neutral color. I use a really, I use a cold color that's super dark for my skin tone. And you guys want to do something like the same thing so that it shows up. You want it to be a little bit warm so that it shows that warmth of color, but you want it to also be visible from and 20 rows back. That's how big the auditorium is. Is it 20 rows? Might be more. Um, so you're going to use a blush brush, which is different from a powder brush. Blush brush. It's smaller. Or you can use the one that comes with the makeup, depending on what you choose to do. So you're going to get a nice heavy dose of blush and start going up along the cheekbone. Get it really covered. This is not regular makeup. It really isn't. You want heavy application. Okay? One cheek down, one to go. It's more of you creating a line than anything else, which is weird and I apologize. Like I said, ballet is illogical. Okay, next step is typically you would use a bronzer for this, but I am cheap and I use a darker <sighs> compact powder foundation for it. Don't follow in my footsteps. Get yourself some actual bronzer. It'll help your life. So, you're gonna get the compact. You're gonna dose it the same way you would, and you're just gonna do it right underneath the blush. If you make the fishy face, it helps identify the line that you're trying to draw. Now, my jawline is a little soft, so especially if I go like this and I turn sideways, it's soft. So I need to define that. So what you want to do is do the same thing, but go right underneath the jawline all the way down the chin. This is kind of a sloppy job, girls. I expect a more precise movements but this is just so that you get a general idea of what you want to do your face is remember that your face is different from mine so you may need to go heavier or lighter depending on your bone structure for the blush and the contouring coloring so remember you want to get a little bit on the forehead and definitely in the t-line okay all right next step it's going to be eyeshadow, I do believe. So for me, I don't like toting around too many things, so I got myself the Naked palette, which is really helpful for me. It might not be for you, to each their own. So, because it has a lot of really neutral colors in it. So what I'm going to do... stand up. Um, I'm going to get my base brush, which is a little medium sized brush. It doesn't, at least to me, at first, did not look like an eyeshadow brush, but trust me, it works the way it's supposed to. 
so what you're going to do is you're going to get a really neutral color for your face. So I'm going to go with, I'm not going to say the name, it's light pink one. And usually you want to go with bolder tones on stage. So I'm going to go with a nice copper color. So I'm going to go in there, the pink and copper. It really suits the skin tone and that's what you want. Is you want something that suits your skin tone. Don't use the same colors as me unless you have the same coloring that I do. Okay? So again, same mixture for this one. Really get all over the eyelid from this corner, this brow, all the way over to the end of the brow and the end of the corner of the eye. That's your shadow area. Next, I'm going to use a crease brush, which I have somewhere. I should have been prepared. This is like every Thursday, isn't it? There it is. All right. This I'm going to use for my dark coloring, my gold, and the white that I'm going to put underneath my eyebrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a darkish color. This one's going to be called Snake Bite. It's still a neutral color, which is what you want, but you the point of stage makeup is contouring. That's pretty much it. It's straight up contouring. And so you want to keep a dark color. Remember, I said that my eyes were put set close together. So I'm going to start in the middle and go out. Unless your eyes are close together, don't do that. If your eyes, if I have told you specifically that your eyes are close together, do what I'm doing. If not, do remember start at the eyebrow. Okay. So you're just going to stick it in the crease and brush it around. I, like I said, I am careless and lazy, but. So I'm not doing a very precise job, but it's the basic thing. You really, you kind of do want to wing this too, so that you have more of a dramatic look to your eyes. I don't have any fake eyelashes on me, just saying if you wanted to use fake eyelashes, um, I will tell you at one point, at the point that you're going to put them on, but I don't have them on me, so I'm not going to apply them myself. Um, so, again... You're going to get in the center and just wiggle that brush around until you cover the entire eye. Not really, just the crease. And clean it up when you're all done with your fingers. Again, best eraser, best blenders. You don't need to buy anything fancy. I promise you. Okay, next thing you're going to do is you're going to do the gold. Remember we talked about the gold. Is it light enough in the for you guys? Let me see if this make a difference. Does that make it better? Yeah, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> um, I just turned these ones off because they were so, like, they make the room so hot. Um, the gold. So I'm going to pick, because I have a very light skin tone, I'm going to pick a very light gold. Go with the gold that goes with your skin tone. Do not do exactly what I'm doing, okay? Just follow the steps. So I'm going to pick a really light gold. And really get it in the corner of my eye. So that it adds a real highlight in there which is the point of this and then you're gonna get on the inside right there okay and you're gonna do the same 
on the other eye. I get inside on the eyelid to highlight it. Okay. Uh, last and final step for the eyeshadow portion of this tutorial is going to be the white. I don't have a specific white on me right now. And like I said, I am broke and I can't afford to buy myself random white eyeshadow just because. So I'm going to use a substitute kind of yellowish, like yellowish creamy just to get under the eye eyelids or eyebrows. Really highlight them and it really just brightens up your eye. Okay. Now, next step, which I'm probably going to mess up, so please don't laugh at me in class on Thursday. That's just not kind to do to your ballet teacher. You can laugh at me when I'm not around, just not in class. Next step is liquid eyeshadow. So my brush is a little funky. Um, I don't know how it got that way. I'm not, I don't care how it got that way. Just observe. Like I said, I'm lazy. This is me being lazy. See how it wings all the way out to the line of my eyebrow? That's what you want. It gets thicker about right there, which is where my iris will be centered if I'm looking straight ahead of me, and it wings. It's not a huge thickness. You don't want it to, you don't want it to cover this little part of your eyelid, but there is a thickness there. Same for the other side. This is the part where I'm gonna mess up. I promise you. Like I said, lazy. Kind of ish even. I'm not worried. This is just a tutorial. Even ish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Now for the killer. Remember? We talked about lower eyeliner. This is where it gets messy. I'm gonna pull and really get in there on the inside 
I remember I said it's not going to stay this way. You're going to want to want Q-tips. So once you get on the inside, then you're going to do, if you have narrow set eyes, like I do, you're going to start in the middle where your iris would be and thicken. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this one eye. It, it's the same. It's doing the same thing over and over again. Like I said, your own body fluid is not going to hurt you. My teeth are clean. I'm going to really need to clean it up, especially if you're as messy of an eyeliner doer as I am. So, I'm actually, I'm going to clean that up a little bit more. Since I'm not doing fake eyelashes, it's a bit heavy on the bottom. There we go. Kind of normal. All right. Now remember, we talked about those two eyeshot. After you do that, if it's still really heavy coloring underneath that, you might want to go over that with the gold again and just line the eyeliner. Just a real heavy, or a real light coating, nothing too heavy. You don't want it to overpower it because then you have to redo the whole thing all over again. And you don't want to do that. So now, first coat of eyeshadow, of mascara. I do it specifically if now would be the time before you start the mascara. Now would be the time to put on your fake eyelashes. Actually, probably would have been before the lower eyeliner. Sorry. Do it before the lower eyeliner. Okay. Now it's time for the eyelashes. Now you're going to glue them to your eyelashes with the first coat of mascara which should be a really like heavy creamy liquidy if you can find it do that eye wait for it to dry while you're doing that while you are waiting for it to dry you are going to get your eyeshadow or your mascara for your eyebrows now what I do is a little bit controversial in the makeup community but like I said I'm lazy so I try to find the quickest possible and easiest way to do everything so what I like to do is if especially if it's a brand spanking new bottle you're gonna open it up just a little bit enough so that there's kind of an airflow leave it overnight you want it dry if you have it too wet it's gonna get everywhere and you're gonna have to start everything all over again and I don't want you to do that, and you don't want you to do that. Okay? So then, mine is already dried out because mine's really gross. It's four years old. But, and it kind of smells. But you're just going to do, I do this because mine is super dried out. So I have to dig mine in. I'm going to dig it in, 
and just scrub my brow to get this really heavy eyebrow look. You want killer eyebrow game, girls. If you don't bring the eyebrow game up on stage, it's not going to be pretty for anyone. You're still waiting for this mascara to dry, okay? So, next thing you're going to do is you're going to do your lip liner. I advise a pencil. I just got this one because it was the only one they had left. Pencils are so much easier to work with though, I promise you. This is gonna want to You're not the one but I suppose I'll settle for you. And the last. Nope, not in there. Okay. All right. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get and you're going to outline your lips on the line. Okay? Not under, not above on the line. All right, stick it in and apply your lipstick. Pretend I did the napkin test, which is you fold a napkin in half, place it between your lips, smush on it like this, and it just cleans up your lips. Also, make sure you clean off your teeth. I don't want to see anybody going on stage with red teeth. If you do, I'm going to give you the death glare on stage. Have no doubt. Now, that, that mascara is finally dry. You're going to apply your final coat of mascara, which can be as creamy or less creamy than the other one, but there you go. You can't really see anything, but do you, do you understand the coloring differences? How I have my base and then I have my gold right here. I have my darker color right here and then the white up here. You want it really all of it blended. Okay, girls? Um, last thing, powder you should all be able to do yourselves. Um, that's not a big mystery. I'll do it for you right now, just in case. But it, trust me, the powder is the least of your worries. I'd say that the, eyeshadow, the eyeliner is going to be the hardest part. Um, excuse me. Uh, so, last thing is going to be the powder. It's down there. Okay. All right. Let me get my powder out because everything is disordered. What I wanted to demonstrate to you, blush brush, powder brush, size difference, blush brush, smaller, powder brush, bigger. I had issues with it. That's why I'm emphasizing it. Not to say that you will, just that I did when I was a kid. All right. Like I said, I use the Airspun powder. Mine's about six years old. So it's kind of falling apart. But they last a long time, so I'm not worried. Um, 
you want it to be a light coating. You don't want to start off dark. So you have a light coating of powder and you just get everything covered. Those shiny spots. I have perpetual shiny spots that will never go away no matter what I do. And those makeup professionals that stumble upon this video are probably going to go. It's because you don't use expensive makeup that suits your skin tone. Yes, well nobody can afford expensive makeup that suits their skin tones. Or that suits my skin. The oiliness of my skin. Remember, you want to do your lips. Okay. There's your makeup tutorial, girls. I wish you the best of luck for Tuesday. Remember, hair and makeup done. Low bun, parted however you want. I'm not going to be exact about that. All right. Thank you, girls. I will see you all on Tuesday. No, Thursday. Oh, dear. I will see you all on Thursday. Best of luck with your makeup. I'd say I, if you're going to do it for pictures, I'd say do it a couple times before picture day. So, all right. Thank you, girls. See you on Thursday.